Welcome to part two. I'm joined by Terry. Uh, David Adelaide, oh, Wardley, what next for them, Terry? Um, I think they'll probably give Wardley the phrase of Clark fight. Um, he still needs to build a little bit before you can start shunting him at that sort of upper echelon. Or even until you start trying to put him in with guys like Jared Anderson, like sort of his peer group, the Jared Andersons, um, the FA Jagbers. You still probably just take your time with him. Like that. I think what they're doing with him is right. And one of the things we don't give him credit for is sticking with his original trainer. Yeah, that continuity is so important. When you've got someone who knows you, they can always get the best out of you. So oh. no, I've got a lot. John, I've got a lot of time for both of those lads. It's a shame they have to fight each other, but look, that's what we want in boxing, right? I hope both both go on to to win championships and be successful because their chemistry was unbelievable. I really, really enjoyed watching those guys. Yeah, uh, well, they built it up well. David Adley, I think he knows how to sell a fight. He can crack. He's entertaining. He's exciting. But for me, he's not seasoned enough yet. But I don't think he's frightened of anybody, Terry. No, I don't think he is. He's just... He hasn't got the right tools. A bit more experience even, needed, isn't it? Do you think? Yeah. And even if he had the right tools, I don't know if he knows how to use them yet. And that's what he's got to work on. Do you think he should change trainers or stay with his whip? Ah, uh, David, you don't well, like what, changing what, trainers, do you? No, I'm like, look, stick with stick with what you've got and get good with that. Like, because if you keep hopping from trainer to trainer, you end up having to reset and go again. You think that's where Joshua's problem is? He's like, he's confused. He's spoke to that many different people and trained with that many different. Well, mate, he claims to be on these four-day darkness retreats. Then we see him at the Formula One. So he, I think he's just generally confused in life. Confused in what? In life. Yeah. Do you feel that he's in a dark, dark place? I don't just mean that hole he's in for four days. <laughs> mate, he's, he's a multi-millionaire. He'll never have to work again in his life. I think he's in a good place. You I think, think if he needed is... to go to a dark place, you should have watched Cateral Linares. Save you send a lot of money. No, no, you got to build up to that sort of torture, mate. What? Oh, God, all them years of championing Jack Cattle. was a lovely kid, by the way, but he had balls big enough to arrive in a dump truck, didn't he, uh, for the last two years because he beat Josh Taylor, in, according to him and his team. And he did win, but he didn't turn up, did he, against the Niners? No, 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 I think he did. I think Taylor didn't turn up against Cattrall. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, Jack okay. Catra will never, he'll never be a guy you want to pay to watch. And that, that's entirely on his shoulders. He could do if he wanted to, but he chooses not to. Yeah. Uh, now that this Usyk fight's not on, do you think that they might ease up on? Sorry, do you think that they might, we might see a bit of humility from the Furies? Do you think they might come out and say, look, Usyk fighting on because of this, and this happened, that happened? Do you think we might get all these excuses and they might turn over a new leaf and be a little bit more nicer to press? Or do you think they'll wheel out Captain Chaos and he'll just tell it as it is, Tyson won, lost round three and he won it all the other news. Pop, pop, bang. Well, that's what he's just said now. I think there's more chance of John Fury fighting Mickey Thea. Than, than, than them coming out and being humble? Yeah. Well, John says he only lost round three out of ten rounds. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but but no no. But the, I will say this though, right? Oh. There's a certain amount of extra kind of love we were giving in Garner just because he was doing better than we thought. There's that that kind of bias as well. Remember, psychologically, we're, we're always primed to confirm what our eyes tell us, right? So we're like, oh my god, and Garner hasn't been knocked out. Oh, he must be doing well, and then we find reasons to to justify that statement. So I think. If we watch that fight like a week and a half from now, we'll go, actually, you know, quite right. It was a close fight. Could have gone either way. But it shouldn't have been in that position, is the whole argument. It shouldn't have even been close. Do you know what I mean? It shouldn't have come within a hair's breadth of, oh, this fight's competitive. It shouldn't have been. Why the hell was that fight competitive? What about me sat in Garsdale in Berry? I'm like, oh, what do you think about the fight there? Holding court. I'm like, Fury round one. Should blast him away. <laughs> He's a bully. He'll do him in a round. Look what happened. Mate, see, when I, when I saw Ngannou's head, just, I was like, you're not knocking that head out, man. Like, that's the sort of, 
you know that you, you know you see those guys, Russ, and they end up just manhandling six coppers on their own. Yeah, that's in Ghana. Scott Brunt. Jimmy... <laughs> <Huh>? Scott Brunt. <laughs> No, 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 but Scott Brunt will do it by, by hitting people, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Nganu, they could have six officers pinning him on the ground. If Nganu wants to get up, he'll just get up. Yeah. yeah. You know that, that, that raw, just, just strength. He walked toughness. fury in clinches, didn't he? You know, the early clinches. He walked yeah. fury, in, and I've never seen that. I, we, we look for little things like that, don't we? I thought, whoa. And after the second time, he hit fury, like I said, it backfired, and fury, his face <laughs> like... I can't. I, I said to Julian, "You see that we can't get it out of our heads, you know, because you're, some, you're used to seeing something like Tyson Fury, so comfortable in his environment. It's probably the most comfortable environment he's got at the moment in his life because he'll have a lot going on in his life at the moment. Won't he? he might miss his kids, his father in tow, and everything else. He's probably got a lot on his plate. So I always felt that he was always very, very comfortable in the squared ring. But they put an even bigger ring in there for him, didn't they? I thought, yeah." Wow, what's going on here? Is he going to get on his bike? But when he got on his bike, he couldn't. There were no, there were no wheels on bike. Well, the tires were flat, weren't they? Well, they were. We did, we did an episode, Russ, and I remember saying to you because you were asking me about, you know, why is Fury suddenly a power puncher? Yeah. And I said he isn't. I said he's realised that he hasn't got the legs that he had against Vlad. He's not mobile anymore. He, he if you notice, he's he's never well balanced. He, he throws that right hand and his upper body falls over so his centre of mass moves outside of his hips. He's never balanced. He never looks strong. And I don't know if that's his lifestyle catching up with him, but if he could still move around the ring and make people miss the way he used to, he would do. His reflexes seem to have gone. His feet seem to have gone. He's, he's not what he was a few years ago. And that's what happens when you abuse your body. That's what happens when you believe you've got God-given talent that you don't need how's to work gonna, for. How's he going to... How's Fury now going to be sold now? Because it's not a back foot fight. I know he can, he can fight all the styles. We're not saying yeah. he can't, right? But he's, he's 36 next birthday. So he's not a back footer. He's not a runner. He's not sitting in pocket and letting them go. He was he, he were caught in between last night and he's not... He ran out of ideas, and I kept thinking to myself, every time he looked to set himself and go again, he kept getting clipped, didn't he? And it takes your concentration away, doesn't it? And he was like, I'm to reset. And the rounds are ticking by, weren't they? And I think he got to end at eight, and he thought, I'm going to have to get my foot down here. So he did pick it up a bit, and he probably did win them last couple of rounds. But it was, the kid were over the hill then, on Ghana, wasn't he? The job were done. So yeah, I, I... can give it to him, 96-93. In a 10-round fight, Terry, what fight are they watching? If everybody's got it 98-91 in media, how can it be 96-93 to other person? How many rounds is that out? Is that three, 11 rounds out in a 10-round fight? Because they're a knockdown as well. One, it's the total opposite of what they've seen, isn't it? But I, 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 look, media people are not judges. Um, how that, Bert? Uh, no, I, yeah, I... Look, how did mate, you have it, Terry? How did you score it? I didn't score it. Genuinely, I, I was well, to be honest, I was on another call while I was watching it. But I not for one second did I believe Fury won that, is all I can say. Because I'm trying to think of moments of joy that he got against Nganu, and he didn't. Wasn't he? Wasn't he? They didn't even land him with a big right. Do you know what? If I'm well, Nganu so, now. A couple of one tools got through earlier, didn't they? They were very yeah. fast. But he were catching them, weren't he, Nganu? Catching them. Yeah. Where, where were the uppercuts? Where was doubling up on the same I hand? I saw Angano was... going for uppercuts, did you? Yeah. This is what I'm saying to you. Like, where, where was the stuff that Fury had to do to show he was elite? He didn't show any of that. No. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's poor. It was poor. It was poor. It's a poor look for boxing. Um, I think we've got a big job to do to repair the sport. If you look at the garbage Eddie Hearn's putting on, if you look at the mediocre cards Frank's putting on, if you look at the mess that is Boxer and Sky at the moment. The best thing we've got to come out of that Boxer and Sky thing is that they're going to give us Eubank versus Ben at some point. Um, I, yeah, I I kind of gay crashed that meeting not long ago. So, yeah, that wasn't a good look when I found out that was happening. Well, what ha well, what happens now then if Eddie Hearn puts Anthony Joshua in Rion Garno? Is that another slap in the face for the sport? You know, we're a crossover fight. Uh, 
That was the original plan, though, wasn't it? It was Fury and them who stole the idea. It was meant to be Joshua and Garnu originally. Yeah, hang on a second, let's go to something. Porky, have you seen the Sam Jones Sunday sermon on IFL? No, we don't care. Oh. No, I don't care. He's got no gonads. He didn't have balls to come on Porky's corner. No, I won't be watching it. Yeah, stop sending gossip. You're a grown man as well. <laughs> Marcus, you're a grown man sending me nonsense like that. It's Sam Jones. He's not relevant. <laughs> it's, what are grown men doing sending bits of gossip? Like, oh, you hear this? We're grown men, man. We live, we've got lives to live. You know, in about five, ten minutes, I've got to go and coach a bunch of youngsters and explain to them how you don't end up like Tyson Fury. I haven't got time for Sam Jones. Like, like, like he's, he's doing that media thing with the IFL clowns. We're doing real boxing on this side of the conversation. Yeah, you saw my Gary Sykes tribute, didn't you? Where I promised Yeah, you. justice for Gary Sykes. Well, uh, we're not stopping there. There's going to be more billboards and uh, more. Might even be going legal route, but we've got all paperwork to go now. So Smith's got to give Julian his 30 minutes, hasn't he? That's all, unless we have to go through the courts for it. Mate, Robert Smith. <laughs> well, it's one of them things, isn't it? But if you notice at the end of the video... I said, look, we've reached out to IFL. They're not interested in Gary's appeal. But within an hour of us reaching out, they put a post out, uh, John Fury, 8-4-1, and one, age 59, versus Mike Tyson, 58, <laughs> and all that. And all statistics. That is IFL today. Oh, and they might even tell you about what the favourite crisps are, so we've got Eddie Earn on. Pickled onion monster munch. Pop they all want resigning. Eh? <laughs> hey, what, what, this is where boxing's heading now. So Gary Sykes sp spills his guts for the sport. They don't mean no, but John Fury getting John Fury. What did he say? Twenty five million. The fight's worth to him. Let's get John Fury twenty five million because he's going to give you a cut of that, isn't he? Cooks. What was I going to say? Um, we haven't congratulated another real big winner from this weekend. No, oh. gentleman Joe Gallagher. Joe Gallagher went out there to, uh, to do business. He's had something going on for a while because he got Quig training, one at Prince's Sons. So that was yeah. probably the, the first part of when he got in with Saudis. And then look, a year later, he kept it to his sin, hasn't he? He's gone and done the business, hasn't he? Got a lot of time for that. Like, like Her Hearn's on the other side of the world. Was it out in the cold? Frozen! Frozen! <laughs> And there's there's Big Joe now. You know what I mean, like he's he's there right in the Big belly. Joe of the sat on big table with big sheep uh, with big sheeps. Yeah, no, I'm, sheep. I'm happy for him. I'm really really happy for him. I am, and uh, only good can come of it. So, and I think that's good. Is Eddie in with Saudis? I don't know, but wanted to put on Ghana when we Joshua. You're not going to enlighten yourselves to UK boxing fans, Eddie, especially hardcore. We need to see Joshua in a fight with Wilder. That's what we need now at Wembley. Why is Wembley not good enough for these people? Why have we got people like Spencer Brown saying, look, Wembley doesn't generate enough for these guys? Well, what do these guys want? Wait, 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 what? What do you mean Wembley doesn't generate enough for these guys? Wait, we're this is why Showtime, oh, Russ, 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 this is why Showtime are out of fucking boxing. Exactly. Because, because these guys genuinely believe they should be getting Mayweather money, but they don't have the Mayweather kind of effect. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I think the most the boxers should be earning right now, and this is what they should have. They should have their guarantee, and even Joshua. Let Joshua have a million quid guarantee, and then let's let him get that pay per view upside, and then let's see what they really earn. Because it is, it's, it's too much now. You know, that's why Josora's still hanging around because he's like, look, I can still keep draining money out of this. And in the meantime, all these sort of people who think they can make boxing work get disheartened and they just fall out of love with the sport. Because boxing's just become so greedy. Well, and that's I'm, the problem. I've got people coming out, like Spencer Brown coming out, saying, well, you know, it's a prize fight and they're going to get a prize. Look, we've all seen what Tyson Fury said on social media and some people are putting his company accounts on there. 50 odd million one company account. He said he's got another 100 and odd to go in another account. And blah, blah, blah. We're talking hundreds of millions. So why can't the fight at Wembley and give something back? Instead, of, it's got to be in Saudi. Do they think that families, British families who followed Tyson all his career, can just decide to 
flop thousands out to go to Saudi, where there's no beer yeah. anyway. Even when, you're, when your mortgage is up 50%, your rent's probably up 60, you 70%. You, I mean, you're paying 75p extra on a steak now in Sainsbury's. Do you know what I mean? You're, if you've got families to feed, like toilet rolls, 50% more expensive, you've got a family to feed. All you want from these people is, look, stop shafting us and just give us something to feel good again. Let's do that. Yeah, instead of talking Usek Fury, TNT Sports, 39.95. What is all that? Have you heard that Andy Aylin shouting and bawling about what it's going to be to the chosen few? If they charge 40 quid for that, boxing's done. I, well, I, I think I think boxing's done. Like, the rebuild you're going to have to do on Fury after this. Because remember, this was meant to be Fury's road to greatness. But he he's had that Josh Taylor moment. Where queuing up for him now. They're queuing up for Fury now. They're queuing up for him, won't they? Jared Anderson at lot. Yeah. If we can just keep outworking this guy, we'll beat him. Yeah. He's not mobile, so a bit of head movement, we'll get him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you where you're coming from. What bothered me about Fury were the bullying all week, the bullying of the media, Simon Jordan, the rest of them. Uh, That's deserved. No, wait, 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 no, 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 it's deserved. Simon Jordan's stolen a living talking about boxing. We never asked him to get involved. We don't care what he thinks about boxing. He is irrelevant. He had Adam Booth on there and he asked Adam Booth most low ball questions. Why didn't he ask Adam Booth the real question? Yeah, that Mate, was on his own pod, though, wasn't it? Not talk sport. Yeah, but it, it's all connected, though. Well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? But he jumps on that show. Yeah, he botched everything with Eddie Hearn. He botched the, the drugs in boxing. He's botched everything. I'd oh, ban Simon Booth. Jordan from talking. Adam Booth? No, no, no. When he had, remember when he had Hearn on there? Oh, Fox yeah, yeah. There. He, he struggled with Eddie Hearn, Jordan, Simon Jordan, because he didn't know the fundament, fundamentals of boxing like we do. And Eddie yeah. just like, ran rings around. Eddie's kept taking him down there were avenues, and you could see Simon Jordan. He was trying to reset, thinking, right, WBC, Varda, UCAN. Bored and and Eddie just kept checking around Mary go around and I don't think he knew what to say, did he? <laughs> yeah, and Simon Jordan's a clown. Um Gareth A. Davis is a clown. Um that Catrell guy, I don't know if he's a clown or not, but he's talking too much for someone who we don't see at shows. Do you know what I mean? Um what's his mate? Nick Pete. We don't see these guys. And that annoys me. Like we don't see these guys. Uh but side note, shouts out to Chris. He's one of your listeners, Russ. I met him at York Hall last weekend. He, lo he loves you, mate. He absolutely loves you. Good man, Chris. <laughs> that's off. what I mean, Russ. Like, you know me. I show up at shows. Yeah. No entourage. No no, no protection. I show up because this is a sport that matters. And, what do you and think a lot of these guys show? don't. What mm -hmm. do you think to that York Hall show? I was just happy for Isaac, mate. I, I wasn't there for the quality of fight. I was there because He's he amazing. finally got the belt he deserved. Well, to be honest with you, like, I always thought after he fought a Coley that people were saying, God, if a Coley beats him, look at the state of him. But a Coley went on to win the world, didn't he? And Isaac didn't disgrace himself in that fight, did he? No, nor did he disgrace himself against Bill and Smith. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think he I might have the tools to beat Bill and Smith down the line, me. I'd like to see the rematch. Because remember, Isaac wasn't match fit in that fight. Yeah. He hadn't done many rounds. Yeah. But now, now, that he's done, now that he's done a few rounds, Mate, more than happy to see that rematch. I think, I think that would be a good fight. Um, roughly the roughly similar sizes, both quite workmanlike. You know, I'm happy for him. Genuinely happy for him. Um, the Mick Henry. Do you think that Isaac well. Law? Uh, sorry, not Isaac Law. <laughs> Isaac Chamberlain. Because he's your mate, you were more emotionally invested in that fight ringside than you would have been for like any other fight. You remember when? We were inside when jo when when I signed Josh Whale for Dennis and he got that title fight. And we yeah. were inside for that night, weren't we? And even though the fight were all right fight and Josh won it, I were more invested in it than and you probably were as well than we were any other fight that night, weren't we? Do you know what I mean? Because like it's your mate and blah blah blah. Even if it's a crap fight, you're still invested in it, aren't you? Kind of thing. Do you think that happened with eyes that we all? But that's but that's why I said at the beginning I didn't really care about the performance or the yeah. event. I just he I was there to see him get his belt. Yeah, he, because Russ, like I've lived I've lived it with Isaac for the last five years. Like I remember I, when he was training with Jorge Rubio in Miami, and they had him in this tiny box room at the back of the gym, and that's where he was sleeping. Do you know what I mean? 
he was out then, mate. Like the, the 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 videos he was sending me, the pictures he was sending me of where they had him kipping in Miami, and I just thought, wow, wow. And oh, then oh, look oh. look how many false starts he's had. Meant to be the face of Channel Five Fox, and that goes wrong. All of this stuff that's happened to Isaac, and remember this, Russ. Isaac's never given us a bad fight. Is he still with me? Yeah. Yeah. He Mick he Hennessey. loved Mick. For him, he? Mick Hennessey. Yeah, he loves Mick. He's like, look, Mick picked me up when I was down. No one else wanted to touch me. Mick understood and Mick helped him. And not only just with the boxing stuff, Mick's helping him with life stuff too. He has yeah, a good place to live. Him on houses and everything, Mick Hennessey. Yeah. What to do with you want to live here? Also. That's good. It's good for good. schools. That I can put in a word for you. Mick's done so much for Isaac. And and I'm I'm happy because think about this, Paul, right? Isaac turned pro in 2015. Dan Aziz was still amateur. Denzel was still a novice. And these guys are mates, right? Yeah. But now they get to meet up and they've all got the British belts. That Denzel Bentley. Yeah. Yeah, and Isaac, are they friends? Yeah, really close friends. Would they spar them because they're different weights, aren't they? Ah, probably not now. It, it, it's not beneficial for either one, if you see what I mean. Because they don't meet in the middle weight-wise. Yeah, both good fighters, though, aren't they? they both had, both done it old school way. They, no, they both... Yeah. They've not had no gid, have they? Denzel Bentley's not had no gid, has he? I know that. You've only got to look at his foot, haven't you? And Isaac's had no gid, have they? No, but they've always entertained the fans. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And we should be backing people that entertain. We need to stop hero-worshipping people because of their name, like Fury, and go back to people who, if if they fight 10 times, 8 times out of 10, you're going to love the fight. Yeah. Just get back to supporting those guys. Yeah. What did you think to Joe Law's fight against Mick Hennessy Jr.? Uh, do you think Mick Hennessy Jr. is a bit upright, Terry? Well, so I've got a question for you, Russ. Hmm? Which next generation fighters are we allowed to criticise? I don't really know, to be honest. Because we, we slaughter Campbell Hatton because he's Ricky Hatton's kid. Yeah. We slaughter Conor Ben because he's Nigel Ben's kid. Yeah. But Mick Hennessy Jr. has just been allowed to get on with it. Yeah, but he's... But he, but he got where he got to because of his old man. He doesn't box on Sky without his old man. Yeah, but he's also been matched hard, hasn't he? For, to say he's had an handful of fights. Has he? He's been, I think he's been matched harder than Campbell Latin. Yeah, Joe Laws in his 11th fight or 12th fight. But Joe, Law, Joe, Laws, Joe, Joe, Joe Laws won, or what, as you'd say, Paul, he won on settee. Yeah, I understand that. But when you look at the how, how it's gone now, the you know, like the Campbell Latin, the fight is such low. I never heard Eddie Earn and Ricky Atten don't see eye to eye on all the matching him with, with Tom Dallas. But when you see him fighting such low effect fighters and not waste, man, but the really poor matchups. You see Mick Hennessy's young and who's a novice starting out, and he's in like a bit more decent the fights than that. So we get it in our mindsets that well, Mick Hennessy's son's matched harder, don't we? Even though comparing him to something like Frotcher's career at this stage, he's much softer than Mick Hennessy's son. So, so what? Yeah. So this is my point. Who who do we jump on? Because there's certain people who have got into boxing off their parents' name. Yeah. Mark Tibbs is an example. Yeah. Never been criticised. Never. Yeah. But Maybe others Mark's get roasted. Trainer, though, he? He's not a fighter, is he? He's a fighter, it's right? That same principle, though, right? Like, yeah, would, yeah. Mark, would Mark Tibbs have what he has now without his old man? No. Well, no, probably his dad's probably guided him and he's learned off his dad, hasn't he, probably? Yeah, and so this is why, and I guess I'm making this point because I think we need to be a bit more sympathetic to, to the Hattons and the Bens of this world. For no other reason, Russ, that yeah. if you look at Porky's Corner, let's say this becomes like the the billion pound media platform it deserves to be right <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. you want you want oh, your man. family involved in that yeah well i'd like to get my little reggie involved doing some tech stuff when he's a bit older and give him a little bit of yeah yeah you want me on you want me or you want me or anyone else on the sidelines going he doesn't deserve to be there yeah listen all these i have on here now this porky's commission thing we've got whatever people have earned <laughs> the right to be on here We've earned the right. Yeah. It's six years now, next month, or next yeah. week. We've earned the right. And, uh, you know, we've had like 67 different people on here, but there's only seven pictures up there, isn't there, including me. So it ain't for everybody, Terry, is it? No. And so my point, I guess the point I'd make with Mick Hennessy Jr. is 
he's hit his ceiling as a pro already. Yeah. He will do amazing things to get a belt. Taking after his dad. If he gets an English belt, he's overachieved that kid. But he's a decent, nice, well spoken young man, isn't he? You know, he don't. Yeah, but you say. So but Campbell Aston, because... though, isn't he? Campbell Aston's a nice spoken kid, isn't he? That, that's what I mean. Like, we, we can't pick and choose the next oh. gen kids we, we slaughter. I'd like to see Mick Hennessy move more into the business side of boxing. I, I like, what's the point of getting your head punched in? When you're not going to be that guy, just just be a good manager, be a good promoter, and help young talented kids make a truckload of cash. But Conor Ben, going back to that, he's <laughs> rubbed everybody. I know, I couldn't help it. He's rubbed everybody up the wrong way. Tell Annie, come on. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, is a lot of the energy towards Conor Ben really energy that we want to aim at Eddie Hearn? Yeah, Ben. He ben, comes yeah, with him, ben. doesn't he? They come together, they come as a package. <laughs> it's like if Usyk loses to Fury, Fury beat a small man. The one, one of my favourite porky quotes. Well, it's right, isn't it? Usyk's a world beater, if Fury beats him, it's a small fella. <laughs> Tyson ran loser to note last night, one in, no matter what happened. If he knocked that guy out, right, early, we were going to hammer him. And if he won on points in a stinker that he should have lost, we were going to hammer him. So... If they stay in the lane and fight the fights that we want, they won't get any criticism, would they, Terry? From the porkinator. If I set about them, they're getting it. It's like somebody says to me, I hear that ice was broke, and I'm like that on A1 about 105. <laughs> and I'm under this bit. Where will I get home today? <laughs> <laughs> and my old beaten up Toyota. But what happened to the BMW? I wrote it off, didn't I? How? I ran over an hole in Ravenfield in, in the road and the control arm uh, come off the middle of the car. It's a tech wheel and it's sort of like lifted yeah. front end up, pierced through grill, put me sidings in a field. <laughs> yeah. So they paid me out and found a remap on it. So I was lucky to get some. I didn't get what I should have got. I lost about 10 grand on the car. Oh, so, so if you remap it, it invalidates? Yeah, that's how you remapped it. So they got in touch with previous owner. And they said, we didn't remap it. So I had all sorts of issues. I insured it for so many miles a year as well. And I went over by about 4,000 miles. So I turned around and I says, yeah, it's not my fault I let my car out. So because it says, how many miles do you do a year? So that one were all right. But when it comes to remap one, they were having <laughs> I was lucky to get what I got out of it, mate. I didn't think I was going to get anything. I've had a rate battle on with them as well. They don't pay out. They don't pay out insurance companies. But now I've bought a Toyota Avensus. To get me through winter, kid. I like Toyotas, don't I? I've got that RAV4 on it, but I like Toyotas, <laughs> but it's not a three litre Beamer X drive, is it? But nah. 45 quid tax, Terry, 15 plate, uh, 68.3 tick gallon going to Berry. It's not bad for me. I'm using 20 tick gallon, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they were like that. 105 off a cliff on A1. We get home, I'll sort that. this out when I get home. Bop, bop, bang. But uh, listen, this is how I look at it, right? I get emails every day. They're being, people are being critical, saying that I'm being critical. I feel I just have to reply to what I see in the boxing news and what's going on. I just have to give my take on it. And usually what I see is just rubbish. I see a load of rubbish and I think, well, I'm right, I'm right. I think I'll have to say something. And over six years, it's become my, and I'll be into a business on it. And I've had a bit of last six months. Yeah. Battle, but... I don't know. I didn't start. I, I didn't want to do this at the beginning. I didn't think it'd get like this. But now, you know, one thing you're gonna to have to do at some point, Russ. What? You're gonna to have to. You have to show up at one of them like Warrington shows in Leeds and just oh, do a yeah, sit down. In Leeds. I'm go there. I go to Nick Manners every other week. No, no, no. You got. You got. You got to do the. How am the I gonna get in when I've tried three times now at matchroom shows and every time I've been knocked back? What can I do? I can... Take, that's why you got to go with Porky's army. What what I have to do? Take uh, get a uh, get a Magnum Tash, <laughs> grow a Magnum Tash, and I don't know a big beard or something. Put like the weight back salad. on. Huh? Put the weight back on. I need to put some weight back on. Yeah. Fittest hundred and sixty-two pound kid in Doncaster this morning. Kid, pop pop bang. Ah, on the hard road. Have you heard old from Rico? Oh, he messaged me this morning. Uh, he sent me a voice note. He's not happy with Fury at all, man. He's not happy with what Fury's done to boxing at all. Miko ain't got no time for Fury's old man, has he? 
Did you hear Ultra Tech? Somebody sent me some clips from what Ultra sent to put out yesterday this morning. Apparently, Ultra Tech went full in on them, did he? All at full hour, minute, one hour, just set about <laughs> all of them. John Fury, I want your gun out boxing, he said. But it's it's a like we said at the beginning, it's just the biggest pump and dump we've ever seen in boxing. Pump and dump. That's what they do on stock exchange, isn't it? You and your yeah. mates. Pump yeah, and just... dump. Is that what you do when you rinse us, us mere mortals, Terry? You <laughs> stock traders. <laughs> when you sell us all these subprime mortgages, about 90% a year, approximate annual percentage rate. Mate, live on live, live on pay per view. Huh? You know, you know, you know, you're, you're all right. You know when they, when you watch Sopranos and they arrest them, they say, "Why don't you go arrest somebody down Wall Street? They're where the real crooks are." <laughs> uh, go on, you were saying so. Pump and dump. That's where. That's, that's what they did. You know, a wait in it. They pump and dumped all that stock, didn't they? Yeah, and that's what they, they do. The whole Fury. world did the Terry. Yeah, look, but they've done it with Fury, right? Fury sunk boxing when he pumped and dumped, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So now that the dust settled, what do you see him coming out and saying tomorrow? Because it'll be tomorrow now, won't it? I think I'll just say Ngani was a good fighter. I thought I won. I outlanded him. Um, but he showed that he he belongs wherever he wants to be. I think I'll just say that. Well, when the crowd booed, they asked Fury if he thought he won, and he went, oh, you know, close fight and all that. You never hear him say that. Yeah. He had his head down at end, like, I think he knows he's lost. That's what I thought. Yeah, and he looked like a guy who was like, I don't think I've got it anymore. I thought they were going to come out and say, look, it's an exhibition. It ain't really a loss. No, I've just checked it last hour. It's on box record. On box record. But if it won a, a win, it wouldn't have gone on box record as a loss, would it? There you go. So we know what's but going I, on I, there. I, I, yeah, I, I think you'll find that the penny dropped with Fury that he he's not what he was. Mm. It's like Lennox when he fought Vitaly Klitschko. There were a lot of that last night, weren't there? Except Lennox got the job done. Yeah, Carl Froch and Groves. Froch, who could have blamed Froch for walking away after the first Groves? But inside should have been stopped in the first round of the first fight. Yeah, but he couldn't. He could walk away. I wanted to correct it. Now, does Fury want to correct, correct that with Ungarno? I'm not so sure. I don't think he cares. But if he did, what would fans say? Because they'd be like, they couldn't moan because they're screaming that he lost. So rematch him, and then we'll be saying, "Well, you put rest of boxing on all." But what if Ungarno is now a boxer because he's approaching 38? <laughs> Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce is knocking on a bit. Yeah, I mean, who's he going to fight now? I'm gone. Well, Eddie's saying just now on here, somebody just sent me, uh, he, he's, they're happy to do fight I'm gone on Joshua. Oh, God. Oh, well, yeah. We've got Sam Jones coming up with his Sunday sermon, Dave Caldwell. Uh, uh, they wheeled them all out. The rats love the cheese, don't they? They're wheeling them all out this morning to... Uh, There'll be Spencer Brown coming out any minute now, or will they? Spencer, 17 interviews you've done this week. Bet none yesterday, pop, pop, bang. Come see me. Come see me, Spencer. You know it makes sense. Hey, for us, I do have to go now because I've got some No kids problem. To coach. I know you're coaching. Mate. Great, take care, Tell. Mate, when's this one out? This one's going out in the next 30 minutes, both of them. Wow, perfect. I'll be, I'm cracking on with it now. The thumbnails are done. I'm just going to do the tags. <laughs> All right, pal. See you, Tell. Uh, cheers, mate. Bye. Right. Right. Right, that was Terry. Women love him. Men want to be him. Pop, pop, bang. Uh, I've got Julian coming on today. Uh, let's have a little look through the phone. Oh, we've got a few minutes. Let's have a little look through the phone we can pick. Uh, Julian. Oh. Uh, Andy Rose. Look, oh, that's two. Get in touch with me. Uh, do you remember him? Matt the Casual. Who used to come on and big up all things Eddie Hills. He wants to come back on. Matt the Casual. We'll have him on. Uh, Bunny, strength and condition man. We'll have Bunny back on. He can talk to us about Fury's condition. Uh, whether he's in shape or not. 
Looked to me like they'd sewn a rubber dinghy around his waist under his skin. Chris Burns on about making a comeback. We'll see. Uh, Clinton Woods, come see me. Hope you're well. Give me a ring, Clinton, about that other thing we were on about. Curtis Woodhouse can have you on any time you want, Adrian King. Dale, hardcore pound, pound for pound voice of boxing. Nichols, Dale's retired. Uh, let's have a look. Dylan White, I don't think he'd want to come on. Pop, pop, bang, Dylan. What do you want to kiss and make up? Frank, my mate from Berry, he can come on in any time. Joe G's in Saudi. John Anthony, ex cruiserweight, he's been on. Lee Frotch. Lee Frotch is, uh, I don't know if Lee Frotch is still doing uh, unlicensed. I hope he is. Max Birch, he comes on regular. Let's have a look. Let's have a look here. Nicky Smedley. I asked Nicky to come on all the time, and whenever we set it up, he always swerves it. Oh, Ozzy Smith being on, he could come on any time. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We've got here. Big Richard, he'll be on this week. Uh, Rico, he'll be coming on this week. Ryan Rolos, I think he's on today, Ryan Rolo. Uh, I've got to do something with Scott Brunt this week regarding Chad Gainer. Let's have a look. Stu Curry, Manchester trainer. He's welcome on any time. Plenty to go at. There's that footage from the Danny, the kickboxer from Berry to sort now. So we're busy as out here at Porky's Corner. And that's how we like it. All right. Now we enjoyed the boxing last night. The greatest event ever. And there were no post-fight press conference. Why is that? When the own fighter won. Uh, because we know we're a robbery, don't we? We know what we saw, and that's it. Fighters get old. It doesn't mean the bad people. Sometimes they get old overnight. And that's just how it is. But if they've had a twelve-week training camp and you cut and you're saying you're ring rusty, well, that's not good, is it? How can you be ring rusty if you've had a train uh, a twelve-week training camp? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You got beat just like you got beat against John McDermott and against Otto Wallin and Wilder at first fight. All very lucky decisions. Four very lucky decisions. The drug situation, Wild Boar, the refu the cocaine one, and then the refusal. All that for a two year back dated. Well, Liam Cameron got four year for cocaine. Tyson had another two charges, so it should have been a twelve year ban, shouldn't it? Really, You've got two year ban. They've had it off at millions of pounds. Been a fantastic, had a fantastic career. Uh, English, British, Irish, Commonwealth, European, world champion. Won all the belts, but never held them all at the same time at Ring Magazine. Got all that and millions. I ain't going area belt, but has got everything. Done well. They've got four wins over world champions, but it's not all-time great status, is it? I think you should take a year out. Get his set in shape. Take a year out. You do anyway. You take 11 months off anyway. So, what's another 11 months? I mean, I would like to believe you're going to be fighting in seven weeks. No, no, it's not going to happen. So, all that chit chat when I said to you all it won't happen, and you all went, ah, it's mad, all sex mad. You all look stupid now, don't you? All right. So, swivel. Peace out. Thanks for liking and subscribing, leaving a comment. All right. Oh, boy, I can.